Welcome to Electra Online. Now you will see that the power observation and the reasoning that went with it was enormous when, we, when it came to Aristarchus. Aristarchus, that's a hard name to pronounce for me. He was another Greek. He lived in the period 310 BC to 230 BC. And what he did was he started observing the solar and lunar eclipse. And from doing that, he began to realize that he was actually able to figure out the size of the moon and the sun relative to the size of the earth. He didn't know how big the earth was, but he figured he could figure out how big the moon and the sun were relative to the earth. So what he did was he went ahead and observed that during a solar eclipse, let's say the sun is right here and the moon gets in the way and so blocks out some of the light that otherwise would reach the earth, he realized by observing and by talking to people that the shadow formed on the earth during a solar eclipse was relatively small. In other words, the shadow that the moon created would taper down to almost zero width by the time the solar eclipse reached the Earth. So we figured that the taper, the light coming from the sun, would be geometrically tapered like a triangle down to there. Then he realized when there was a lunar eclipse, the Earth would also block the light in that direction, but now the moon would disappear behind the, or into the shadow of the Earth, and he realized then that that taper, that angle, should be the same for the shadow cast by the Earth, and the shadow cast by the moon. But in this case, if the Earth was bigger, then of course, when you go to the orbit of the moon, the, the shadow would still be fairly wide, and the moon could then travel through and actually disappear. He would then time, see how long it would take for the moon to disappear into the shadow, how long the moon would remain in the shadow, and then how long it would take for the moon to reappear on the other side. From that, he figured out that this distance right here where the moon would completely disappear in the Earth's shadow was about equal to 2.5 times the diameter of the moon. Then, of course, he realized that the taper here would be the same here, so that this would be a half a diameter of the moon, and that would be another half a diameter of the moon, so this would here be one half of a diameter, and this would be the distance of one half of a diameter. So altogether, he figured that the total diameter of the Earth would have to be about three and a half times the diameter of the moon. So the diameter of the Earth, he claimed, was equal to 3.5 times the diameter of the moon. And guess what? That's fairly accurate. That is about the relative size of the moon and the Earth. So he did a tremendous job just by observing the eclipses that the, that the Earth was about 3.5 times the diameter of the moon. So that causes the size of the moon or the volume of the moon about to be about 1 50th the volume of the Earth. In other words, the moon can fit into the Earth about 50 times. Then he tried to figure out how big the sun was and how far the sun was. Well, if he didn't know how far it was to the Earth, from the Earth to the moon, then of course he would have difficulty trying to figure out how far it was from the, from the Earth to the sun. But at least he could do it in relative terms. And then later on, when Aristotelus came along and actually figured out the size of the Earth, he could put two and two together and actually figure out how big the Earth really was and how far it was to the Moon, how far and how big the Moon actually was as well. But we'll get to that in the next video. So now going to the Sun, he also tried to figure out how big the Sun was relative to the Earth and to the Moon. So what he did was he watched the, the changing of the Moon when the Moon goes through its cycles and when the Moon was at this angle right here, where, of course, you would see about a half a moon, and he looked at it very carefully, he imagined that there was actually a small angle that was caused by the sun being over here, the earth being over there, and the moon being over there, so that the shadow caused by the back side of the moon and the lit side of the moon, there would not be a line here that was perfectly aligned straight like this, but there would be a slight angle to it. Now, if he tried to measure that angle, which would be very difficult to do, and he much over-exaggerated the angle, he thought that this angle here was about 87 degrees, when in actuality it's more like 89 point something degrees. But it was a very nice attempt to try and figure out what this angle was. So once he knew this angle, he then tried to figure out the distance to the sun using geometry, and from that he figured out that the sun was about 20 times as far away as the distance from the moon to the earth. So 20 times larger, whatever that distance was between, this, between the moon and the, and the earth, he figured that the distance to the sun was about 20 times as far. And because of that, using geometry, he said because of that, the earth 
compared to the sun, or the sun compared to the earth, he figured that the diameter of the sun should be about six times the diameter of the earth. Wow, that was a tremendous way of looking at astronomy and trying to reason through the observations, making sense out of it. Now, of course, these numbers are far from what they actually are. It turns out the sun is about 400 times the distance between the moon and the earth, or the distance to the sun, and the diameter of the sun is more than 100 times the diameter of the earth. But it was a really good start. At least he already understood that the sun was much bigger than the earth and that the distance to the sun was much greater than the distance from the earth to the moon. All he needed now was know how, know how big the earth was so he could actually put some numbers to the size of the moon and the size of the sun. And for that, we need Aristotinus, which we'll see in the next video. But on its own, that was a tremendous way of re using reasoning power to come up with tremendous results in understanding the universe around us. And that was done more than 2,000 years ago way before we had calculators. It's an amazing feat.